It's 2012, the year of the Queen's Diamond Jubilee. And this weekend, millions of us up and down the country have been out enjoying the celebrations to mark a momentous occasion. But last weekend, a group of artists made their way to London to begin their celebrations with a very royal challenge. They joined art student Annika Rice and me, Rolf Harris, to pay a special tribute to our Queen through their art. G'day. 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 Welcome to our pop-up art school. We are below Waterloo Station. You'll probably hear some trains rumbling overhead. And we're directly above the Jubilee Line. We have 60 artists who've joined us with one thought in their minds, to make some magnificent artwork. Yes, we've just got one day to create an amazing art tribute for the Queen celebrating an extraordinary 60-year reign. And if that wasn't enough, we've then got to transform this pop-up art school into a pop-up art exhibition, which you'll actually be able to see from this week until Sunday, June the 10th. Now, the 60 artists are in six groups of 10 people, each one of those six groups representing a decade of the Queen's reign. I think we're ready. Are we ready? <laughs> we all know what we're doing, are we? Do we? <laughs> okay, let's get ready and kill the white. Start painting. So, as our artists get underway, remember we've divided them into six groups each reflecting 10 years of the Queen's reign, from the 1950s to today. Each group has been briefed to produce a different type of art, from street scenes to portraits to still life. They will all work in their chosen medium, that's oils, acrylic, watercolours, pen, pencil, almost anything they want to use. Annika and I will also be painting our own pieces today. I'll be in the 1950s group, and Annika will join the 2000 group. And over the past few weeks, we've also been out meeting some extraordinary people. Hello. Oh, hello. Nice, nice to, to see, see you. you. This is Margaret's house. It's not a showroom. This is her sitting room. This is where I live. And I took to the streets of Windsor to create a very special work of art. And not just any old painting, but a big painting. I didn't realise just how big it's going to be. It's big. And for the first time in years, I'll be working with my big four-inch brushes again. Shall we get on with it? What do you reckon? Shall we do it? Yes! Yeah. Okay, here we go. <laughs> and I can't wait to see how that painting turns out. Brilliant. So let's start by rewinding back to the 1950s and the group behind me are capturing the Queen's coronation in 1953. So it's the street parties and all the colour and the excitement of this great state occasion. Our first group range in age and ability and have all chosen very different pictures from different moments throughout the decade. And some of our artists actually saw the coronation. I was 18 when she was crowned. She's in. Were you there? I was round a television set. Oh. And, uh, um, I was overwhelmed by the fact that she had this terribly heavy crown on her head and with diamonds and gold and yeah. how she could stand up straight all day. Now you're creating um, a scene, I, I can just make it out now, of presumably yeah, the watching stage. the coronation on the telly. Yes, we, that's what our street did. We had one television set in the street and we got as many people in our living room as we could. So you had the telly? We had the you telly. Were very popular. First, I remember everyone smoking and my grandmother had a toothache and she was sitting there moaning and groaning. And that's you down there? That was too? me down there, and reading the eagle in between. Reading the eagle? And that was my first girlfriend. What was her name? June Taylor. Yeah. Um, so tell us the moment where you see the Queen for the first time. Oh, it was pretty amazing. Did anyone shed a tear? My sister did, because she cried at anything. Uh, but I don't remember shedding a tear. Yeah. But I did look. I did look up when the actual coronation, the coach came, and the Queen got out. 
It was a bit exciting. But I've been a bit ambitious with this painting, I think. Okay. But, but we'll have to see how we get okay. on. Well, good luck. I think it's coming together beautifully. Thank Pretty you. Good, actually. Oh, I haven't okay. even started mine. Now, Mary, what are you, what are you oh. up to? Oh, I'm painting my hair home, which was dressed up for the coronation. Tell me yeah. about these photos. Of... They were all taken for the coronation street party. <laughs> that made me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> That's lovely, isn't it? It's nice memories for you? For me, yeah. Sad memories as well. Why sad memories? Because uh. of people that have gone. Yeah. They were all, we were such a happy street. You knew everybody in those days, eh? Well, everybody knew you because they yeah. looked out their windows. And... Well, let's see if we can recapture those days, eh? I hope so. <laughs> I'm not a painter now. This is my first time doing it seriously. Well, this is watercolours. Okay. Yeah, watercolours. Yeah. With watercolour, you always have to make the colour a bit stronger than you think it should be because when it dries out, it fades. So if you're at all worried about watercolour, give us a shout, I'll just be setting up my painting just over there. Thank you very much. Within voice distance. Hello, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> this is serious, stop mucking about. It. <laughs> That's lovely, Ellen. Some colour coming in there. Good. Of course, not everybody was around in the 50s like me. So for you youngsters, here's a little reminder of what that decade was like. One, two, three o'clock, four o'clock, rock. Five, six, seven o'clock, eight o'clock, rock. Nine, ten, eleven o'clock, twelve o'clock, rock. We're going to rock around the clock tonight. When the clock strikes on, join me home. We'll have some fun when the clock strikes one. We're going to rock around the clock tonight. We're going Uh-huh. Who you talk to? Uh-huh. Who you smile? That's with me. Makes me believe no need to grieve. There really is a chance for me. When I hug you, when I kiss you, well, you know I can't resist you. If you ever leave me, darling, you know I'm gonna miss you. There can't be no denying. I feel just like a flying boy when you're not around. My feet at the ground. Today is another landmark because television has made it possible for many of you to see me in your homes on Christmas Day. Wonderful. What I'm hoping to do is my memory of the coronation. And I thought I would just kill the white and start. I stayed out all night the night before in Hyde Park and I had a... (laughs) had a big blanket round my shoulders because it was drizzling with rain. I had my piano accordion on under the blanket. And I would sing Waltzing Matilda to anybody who was fool enough to stop. <laughs> oh gosh, I've made that a bit too fierce. Doesn't matter. I can make it lighter later. So, I'm painting from memory. I was in that crowd and the Queen's coach seemed to come gleaming round a corner straight towards me. And I'm going to make this much darker off towards the left because I'm going to put the golden coach coming in there and I want this to be a wonderful contrast when the coach comes round that corner. So I need that really dark in there. Because Rolf's joined the 1950s group, I decided to paint the Queen as she is today. So I'm in the group taking their inspiration from the last decade of her reign, the noughties. I'm just going to sketch out some of the shapes and some of the negative shapes and then um, chuck some paint on and crack on. Although we want our artists to create a work of art that they're happy with, we're also expecting some of the more advanced painters to help the beginners. It is an art school after all. These are my two little boys. <laughs> two little boys and two little toys. 
Each had a wooden horse tiddly push. Gaily they played each summer's day. Warriors both thought we're not supposed to be oh, enjoying right. it. All right, sorry, you sorry. Know. Let's get back to this. Good Lord, back to work. <laughs> So let's take a look at the next decade, the 60s. Now that's a decade when the Queen had to combine her young family and her working life. But before we meet all the artists, let's take a look at that famous decade. Surprisingly, the royal family are the most photographed and painted people on the planet, which is why we've decided this decade should be all about portraits. In fact, the Queen has sat for at least 129 portraits during her reign. One of those was for me, <laughs> and what a thrill that was, what an honour. And joyful, because I love painting portraits anyway. Must have done about, I don't know, two dozen portraits of myself over the years. It's because you're such a cheap model, you don't have to pay yourself, you're always available. Good tip to anybody interested in portraits, paint yourself over and over and over again. Claire, that's fabulous. Are you enjoying yourself today? Yeah, really lovely, it's really good fun. Talk me through your painting. Yes, yeah, so I'm trying to do like an expressive for a painting where I was like a mother and a young woman in the 60s, so I've chosen to do it quite colourful, to represent the kind of colours of the 60s. Brilliant, and, yeah. and you planning on a career in art? Yeah, I'm studying graphic design, so I'm doing that, but I do, I've always loved to paint, so I can't want to continue that as well. Oh, it's really lovely. Lenny, that's looking good. When I'm making a picture and I'm close to it, I can't really see it properly. I think the light blinds me, so I have to strain my eyes to deem it and get the better view. But for now, I think it's going really well. Just a few more colours, and I think it will turn out. And here we have Karen. Hello. Hi, Karen. Now, you're an art teacher, head of art at yes. school. Um, talk us through your painting. Well, I chose to do just a sort of iconic image of the Queen and just concentrate on her face from the forehead to the chin. Uh, what, what's the sort of biggest challenge working in a place like this? Is it the distraction of everyone else? Well, actually, no, it feels actually quite relaxed, actually. It's, um, it's nice to actually have the time to sit down and paint. Yes, because you're a busy art yeah. teacher. So. <laughs> Most of the time. Right, no. okay. Good luck, anyway. Yeah. Patrick. Now, you're actually a professional portrait painter, aren't you? So, you have a very interesting technique here, it's sort of collage. Mm. Where, where did that start from? It started because it was so much cheaper than buying paint. Mm. It was costing me a fortune. Whereas these, I can just go down the car boot cell and you pick up loads of old scraps. And then it suited itself really well to portraiture because all the pieces you use that go into it can relate to whoever the sitter is. I, I love that idea. So every bit of newsprint and picture, this it all relates to the Queen. Every, well, everything that goes into this one is relating to certain things going on in the 60s. Mainly music and things like that. So there's loads right. of stuff about the Beatles and things going into this one. It's a great idea, isn't yeah. it? And as you yeah, say, a very, great. very cost-effective way of producing a portrait. Yeah. Anyway, I'll let you get on with it. See you later. Thank you. Ron, I gather I'm not the oldest bloke here today. Yes, sir. It's you. <laughs> it's me, yes. What age are you? 90. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. What are you doing today? Well, I'm just doing the um, investiture of the, of the prints, and I thought if I could include this, this is the, the tree of England the strength here, her favourite dogs, the little children that come and give her poses, and the daffodil, of course, obviously for Wales, yeah. and the rose for England. And it's a wonderful heritage, isn't it? Yeah. It's Have wonderful. you been painting all your life? Yes. 
When I was at school, my art teacher said, gave me an old pair of boots. He said, if you can draw those, he said, you're going to be an artist one day. And I, I drew them. And I've always wanted to paint. I, you know, I, I think it's, it's, it's important. Keeps you going. Yeah. Well, it keeps you young. I mean, I don't feel Well, it's, it's something that can carry you along for the whole of your life, I think. Yeah, it, it, it can transport you to all sorts of amazing Exactly. And when places. things are down... Do some you know, drawing, I go down and do a bit of drawing and I'm, I'm all right. Yeah. I'm happy. <laughs> Good on you. Now, on to the 70s, my era. Now, I've got many memories of my childhood. T-Rex, flared trousers, the wombles, power cuts. But there was much more to the decade than just that. really stands out for me for the Silver Jubilee is all the memorabilia that was created. There were coins, there were stamps, plates, cups, mugs, you name it. So I thought I'd put all these things together for a still life, but I needed some help. So I went to meet a very interesting lady. Well, tucked away here in a quiet corner of North London is one of the largest hordes of royal memorabilia anywhere in the world. It's not in a gallery, it's not in a museum, it's just in a very ordinary suburban house. Did I say ordinary? This is the home of compulsive royal collector, Margaret Tyler. So I'm planning on borrowing some of her collection so that I can set up a still life scene that will perfectly evoke the 1970s Silver Jubilee. Hello. Oh, hello. Nice, nice to, to see meet you. you. It's lovely to see you. Oh, would Thank you like you. to come and see my collection? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is extraordinary, Margaret. I know it's a lot of work, a lot of dusting, but I love it. It's a labour of love. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. There's not a surface that hasn't been covered in no, something. No, no. It's got to that point now. I've been collecting for 32 years. And how many pieces do you have? About 10,000 items, starting with Queen Victoria. Um, and I go to antique fairs, antique shops. My children buy me presents. My son in America can get me things, really, that you can't get over here. So I'm very lucky, really. And where did this passion come from? How did it all start? I first became interested when I was eight years old, when, when it was announced that the king had died. And my mum and dad were absolutely forlorn about it. But then, obviously, the coronation the following year was much happier, and I was nine then, so I was able to participate more. And how do you clean it? I mean, this, well, is, this is Margaret's house. It's not a showroom. <laughs> this is her sitting room. This is where I live. <laughs> People can't, so can't fathom got, that. If you've got your friends round, where do you sit? Well, we have to get extra chairs in. But my friends are used to it now. They're very good. <laughs> well, I can't wait to see the, the Silver Jubilee yes. stuff. Where oh, there was that? a lot brought out Where, the Silver all Jubilee. Your... Oh, that's across the hall. We yes, yep, look? yep. <laughs> and there's more. Margaret, this I is know. outrageous. I know, this is my Silver Jubilee room. I just love it. We'd love to borrow a few pieces. Yes, oh, yes. Is that one of them? Well, it's got to be. Yes, it? yes. Colour and yeah, I know. All the lovely reflections. Yes. Because the thing about a still life, we want quite big pieces. Yes. Uh, little things will just sort of get rather yes. lost. Yes, yes, that's C true. Could we borrow that? Yes, yeah, certainly. That's yes, that's fine. Oh, and I love the look of those samplers. That, yes, that. yes. Those are the sort of thing you have in church, you yeah. know, as a kneeler. From potties to mugs and teapots, I just can't get enough of this memorabilia. Let that one go. Yeah. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite nerve-wracking. Margaret, I think we're done. Yes? You better start packing. 
Margaret's also letting me raid her collection for a few props to give our artists some extra inspiration. Margaret, thank you so much. I've just had the best time. I know, I know it's been Will great. Will you come and join us on the day? Definitely. We'll see you yes, then. yes. Okay. yes. Bye bye. Bye bye. Then. Take you. care. Yeah. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to get all this on the tube. <laughs> Well, thank goodness Annika got back with everything in one piece. And as you can see, our artists are using Margaret's still life to inspire them. Hello. Hello. Hi, Sarah. This looks very intricate. Explain what you're doing. This is a lino cut on linoleum tile, and I'm doing a picture. I'm sort of taking some of the things there on the still life but also bringing in just fun elements to make it like Rolf on a chopper so Rolf on a chopper yeah the queen's in a teapot with yeah. her corgis and there's oh, a that's chopper Rolf. yeah that's Rolf so what happens next what happens once you've cut everything out after then I get a roller and I ink it up yep. and then I'll put some paper on top and take a wooden spoon and just burnish the back of it and then you'll see the print. So it's it literally like the old potato yeah. cuttings. Yeah, you never quite know what it's going to look like until right, like right when you print it, and then it's like magic. And and are you a royalist? Are you? I mean, you have made an effort today, Sarah. I'd like to say. <laughs> Thank so you. I'll let you get on with it. Thanks very much. And we've got Keith here. Hi, Hello, Keith. Yeah. How, now you're <coughs> you're quite a beginner, aren't you? Um, yes, and I've been doing it long. Two, three years. Two, three years. Mm -hmm. From from scratch. Before that, you'd never done any <coughs> art at all. No, actually painting. No, only at school. Yeah. I enjoyed it then. Yeah. yeah. That's beautiful. This is um, watercolours, pencils. Yeah, they're good these, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, I do like watercolours, but you get more vibrant colours with the pencils. So when you um, put the mm -hmm. water on, will it bleed the colour? No, because I've got an atomizer just right. to fine film. I mean, I do use these. They're great mm -hmm. because they're so easy to carry around. You, Absolutely, you know, yeah. whereas watercolour can be fiddly you've by the time you've got all go the with it, yeah. palettes and everything. And this is really simple, and you're you're very much in control with this. Yeah, I'll leave it to you. <laughs> Thank you. Now, Trixie, where is she? Good grief. <laughs> So Trixie, what are you finding most difficult? Um, I probably found the shapes, getting the right shapes. Yeah, I mean, the, the way to work around that is to, instead of drawing object, is to actually draw the negative shape, which is the shape in between the objects. Mm -hmm. And you've, you've started to do that really nicely there, so can you see that shape is very distinct if you actually look at the handle. But what you're doing is you're creating the inside shape, not the actual china bit. Mm. And then you'll find that everywhere you look, there are negative shapes. Look between there, between there. It's, a, it's a quite a clever way of um, making sure that all these jumble of objects all stand in the right places. But that's lovely how you've got it there. Mm. Really nice. Yeah. It's brilliant. I think it's about three hours to go. Do you think you're going to finish in time? I hope so. Oh, okay. good luck, Trixie. <laughs> it's looking so. brilliant. Knowing that some of the people were painting memorabilia today got me thinking and I wondered if I could create my own piece of memorabilia for the Diamond Jubilee. <laughs> oh wow! Windsor is my big local town so it's very special to me. And Windsor Castle is hugely special to the Queen because it's where she and her sister, Princess Margaret, spent most of their childhood. So, I think this castle is an ideal subject for my painting today. Yeah. And not just any old painting, but a big painting. I said to the man, make it an eight foot square. And until I saw it here, I didn't realise just how big it's going to be. It's big. But the reason it's that big is we're going to reduce the whole thing down to the size of a plate, creating our own bit of memorabilia. Shall we get on with it? What do you reckon? Shall we do it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Good luck, Rolf, they cried in unison. Good luck, Rolf. <laughs> right, let's do it. That's a good start. What do you think? Of course, the first thing I always do 
is to kill the white. Try and get the lighter areas of the castle. We've got to get the sunlight on that first bit. It's going to be up there somewhere like that. Okay, this is a darker colour, nice shadowy colour. It's going to go up sort of there -ish. I just love using these big four inch decorators brushes. It means I can make huge bold brush strokes and when it's reduced in size they still register. Yeah, yeah I'm going as fast as I can kid, don't panic. <laughs> I've got to get those soldiers marching in now. That's a good bit of colour, eh? My main aim is to get an impression of this whole scene with the soldiers marching out of Windsor Castle so that when you step back about a mile, it looks like the real thing. I'm really loving doing these huge canvases again. Great feeling. Now I'm going to try and get all the piping and the little bits of white on the costumes of the guys. The guards here are the household guards and they've guarded the sovereign since the 1660s. Not this actual group obviously, but they're all part and parcel of that same force that looked after the monarch for all those years. Yep. Rob, I was a guard in 1952. You were there? I was there, yes. Well it's the tall handsome one, that's you. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> you were there when? 1952. Oh, I just arrived in this country then. I didn't see you. <laughs> How nice. Does it convey the image to you? It's superb, just as I remember it. Thank you very much. Okay. okay. Come on. Can you tell what it is yet? <laughs> it's supposed to be Windsor Castle with all the people in the front with cameramen and and the soldiers marching along, and this fellow with a blue scarf here. Shall we pretend the sky is a brilliant blue today? What do you think? With some lovely fluffy white clouds and stuff like that? Did you know that Windsor Castle is the oldest occupied castle in the world? It's been the home to kings and queens of this country for something like a thousand years. Amazing, isn't it? I've only lived in my house for 31 odd years. <laughs> that should do it, yeah. Yes. Got to have a Union Jack flag and a Diamond Jubilee painting. Well, I better sign it. All done. I've got to get the signature in somewhere here because if I do it down there where I normally would, it's going to be cut off when they reduce it to a circle for that plate. So if I have it somewhere there, I think it's got a chance of being in it. I just can't wait to see what this great 8x8 eight eight foot painting looks like when it's reduced to the size of a plate that I could hold in my hand. Well, there you go, that's a sort of test pressing you might call it, although it's not a record, it's, it's a plate. But it's, I think it's worked well going from a square into a circle. A couple of things I want to change that I'm not happy about. And with a bit of luck, it'll go into production and you'll be able to get your very own 
piece of memorabilia for the Diamond Jubilee. It's brilliant, Rolf, and proceeds to charity. Yep. What's not to love about it? <laughs> OK, now listen, don't want to put any sort of panic on the proceedings, but two hours to go, everyone. Well, you filled me with panic for a start. And it's not just us two that need to buck our ideas up. It seems everyone is under pressure to finish their work. I need to get the crowd into my canvas, starting with me at the very back. I hadn't grown my beard at that time, so I was clean shaven. Charming young bloke I was. <laughs> and I've started to fill out the figures on my canvas too. I don't know where I first learnt this technique, but it might be a help to you in some stage when you want to do some fine spray of something or other like a half-tone blurry thing. I've got everything blues and greys, and now I want to add the golden sunlight of that coach coming around the corner. Then you get some water on a toothbrush and you mix it up with the paint till it's really sloppy. Tap off the excess water and then you get your finger there and you spray little bits and the, the sharper the bristles are, the better the spraying happens. Now you're getting some gorgeous sprayed highlights. I hope you can see that gradually increasing in intensity, that, that spray there. Wow, that's the sort of effect I want to get. Yes. <laughs> Is everyone having a lovely time? <laughs> I just thought I'd better check, because <laughs> I am. I love painting with other people in the room, because you, you've got sort of company. You, don't, you can just occasionally say hello, do you want a cup of tea? But you can get very much into your own painting zone. Great stuff. Next stop, the 80s. Dying, and yes. that's the terrible thing. So, sticking with the theme of graffiti seemed to be a very good idea. Ignore the train, welcome to our artists for the 80s decade. And if you're wondering why they're all looking so casual and relaxed, they painted their canvas earlier. <laughs> it's no ordinary canvas, it's a wall. And today we're going to be doing a mural based on 80s graffiti art, which is when it became really popular in this country, and it's when we all started out. And, um, yeah, hopefully it's going to be a great piece of work. Looking at a big space like that um, is always quite daunting. Got lots of good ideas. Hopefully we're going to pull it off. Over the next six hours, four professional graffiti artists will transform this huge blank wall into our 80s artwork. We're marking out the initial design on the wall. It's a very loose sketch, which is going to change as the day goes on. So we're just getting in the basic kind of shapes and composition. Here, to help them get the job done, are six art students who've never done this before. So, first off, a bit of tuition. All right, what you need to do is just to make sure the cap is pointing the right way, all right? Or you're gonna spray yourself or someone else, yeah? Really obvious, but it happens loads using a circular technique. That's it, keep the can moving, that's great. 
As the day wears on, the image begins to take shape. So, I thought I'd pay them a surprise visit. I love graffiti art, and I couldn't resist coming down and seeing how the whole gang are getting on with this. And maybe, with a bit of luck, get to have a go myself. Spray painting. <laughs> G'day, everyone. Julian. Good stuff. How's it going? It looks fantastic. Yeah. What are we doing? Right, OK. So what we're doing here is we're doing our 80s inspired mural. OK, so we, we've got a, uh, a classic kind of 80s cassette tape. Then we've got a great big hip hop B-boy character. And he's got a great big medallion around his neck. And that is the pound coin oh, wow. with the Queen's head on. Oh, and that um, was introduced in the 80s, wasn't that it? That was pound introduced, coin? yes, I think it was 83. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're going to have 1983 written around the side of it there. Really bright, lots of shines on it. So it's going to be, you know, really uh, striking. Can I have a go at something? You yeah. certainly can, yeah. We're going to get you to have a go on the central bit, which is the queen, the coin. Hey. <laughs> You've done it before, though. <laughs> done a little bit, but I was, I was rubbish. All right, so you've okay. Got to, you've got to point me in the right direction. What we're going to do, though, first of all, is we're just going to fill in a big area. So behind the Queen's head here. So um, what you need to do, if you're doing the lines, going up, I just want you to go up to the white lines there. Yeah, yeah. And then literally, you're going to move it around a little circle so you get a nice, solid base okay. like that. All right, so over to you. <laughs> Stick with me, kid. Okay. <laughs> in case I get it all wrong. Keep moving, keep, keep moving. Yeah, keep moving. Keep I'll, I'll try it where, where it doesn't matter yeah. too much here. Uh, it dries pretty much straight away, so if you make a mistake, you can go straight over it. So there's no problem. Oh, that's pretty good. I'm yeah. happy with that. So I can come in close on that. Yeah, that's it. Oh, yeah. See? Ah, good. You've got that's to beware it. of standing <laughs> still, haven't you? When, if you hold it still, it, it all runs, exactly. I guess. Exactly, exactly. You've got to keep moving all the time, yeah. Oh, gosh. That's not as easy as you think when you're going to do it. Oh, I've got a picture actually. Did you, you got a picture? Yeah, there we go. Look at that. <laughs> wow. Oh, that's lovely. Okay, so. When you're planning the whole thing, do you, do you sketch it out first? Yeah, um, we, we normally sketch it out directly onto the wall, so it's all from our heads. There's still plenty of work to do to perfect the artwork. And just like impressionist painting, they refine and refine and then refine again. Well, thanks everybody for involving me. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. Thanks I, a lot. I can't wait to see the finished product. Good one. It's been great to have you involved. Yeah, good on you. Cheers. See you now. Thanks, Rob. Okay. Bye. Bye. And finally, it's finished. It's taken 10 people, plus me of course, over six hours, and I think it's a work to be proud of. Julian, were you all quite happy with the end result? Yeah, we were all very pleased. It came out really well. Have you always been involved in graffiti art? Yeah, from a very early age, about 10 years old, <laughs> I was always scribbling on everything. And then uh, after a few kind of brushes with the law, um, I decided to go legit and start doing commissions. And then eventually I went to college and studied fine art. And How did you find the difference between graffiti and fine art? Well, um, with graffiti art, um, it's all about kind of working with others and getting the community involved as well. We do lots of big community projects, getting all age groups and especially young people. Great. Well, thanks again. Thank okay. you. Okay. Great.
Well, the original has probably been painted over by now, but we actually have a perfect copy on film, and that is going to be projected here. So when you come to the Old Vic Tunnels, as I hope you will, you'll be able to see that image here in our pop-up Diamond Jubilee Art Gallery. Details of our exhibition are on our website at bbc.co.uk forward slash Rolf Paints. Our next decade is in many ways the most difficult. The Queen called 1992 her Annus Horribilis, her horrible year. But the 1990s were a decade of great change as well. It has turned out to be an Amos or Rubinus. It's hard to think that that was only 15 years ago. Our artists here are taking a different approach in their work. First of all, they're doing all their work on the same size piece of paper, and they're all doing it in black and white. So when we bring all those images together, we will have a pictorial chronology of the 90s. Oh, I love it, the scream. What prompted that? The... It just came to me. Gosh, I wouldn't know what to suggest to make that any better. And this is the uh, Annus Horribilis. Absolutely. So I decided to go for Hubble and Haley. And because it was with Hubble that in the 90s we also discovered the first planets outside our solar system. So it's kind of lots of nice science. Are you going to get some feeling of roundness on that? Yeah, I was thinking of using some silver ink and sort of giving a, a shine to you know, one surface of the telescope because obviously the sun is over there. And it won't be back again for another, what, 63 years or something? And will you draw it then when it comes back? <laughs> if I'm, if I'm <laughs> if around. If you're around. <laughs> if I'm around, I'll draw it. That's good. Thanks. Scarlett, what are you up to? I'm doing something to represent the IRA ceasefire. In 1994, when the ceasefire happened, I moved over there, yeah. so it's got a personal thing for me as well. Um, so I've just put it into fingers crossed. Hope it works. Hope, it, hope the peace continues. And yeah, that's so, lovely. And this represents all the people laying flowers for Diana. What I did was I restaged the event um, with just one person. Um, so I took my wife and baby and, uh, and laid flowers just earlier this week. Wow. The last stages will be to darken the grass, perhaps add some washes into the sky. But I, I like the, um, the openness, the space with it. Yeah, it's lovely. And, and letting the white of the paper um, speak. Do all the work, it. yeah. Absolutely. I thought I'd have a look at some of the positive happenings in the 1990s. So I looked at the construction of the Channel Tunnel, which uh, was the first meeting of Europe and UK in over 8,000 years and the erection of the London Eye in preparation for the millennium. You're going to darken all these blobs up? I'm going to, yeah, shade yeah. the bottom of them. Well, as we now know, the country, and indeed the royal family, saw in the new millennium with a newfound strength. And what a decade it was.
Wow, what a fantastic weekend it's been to celebrate the great job our Queen has done. And I can't wait for the Olympics. It's very exciting. We're right up to date now. Let's look at the last decade and see what's been inspiring our group. I'm doing a large-scale photographic collage of Buckingham Palace, this fine building. I will take probably around 100 photographs of the vista going across from left to right, um, not with the intention of making them into one single image, but putting the photographs together so that it makes you look more carefully at the building, it makes you see it in a different way. I try to get into a space of my own where I'm responding to what I'm taking rather than planning too much and that's when interesting exciting things happen. Francis this is great. Thank you, Thank you very much. Wow that's one Thank of our you. camera ladies. It is that's Fleur yes and in fact the last photograph is just about to be stuck. Good. So shall we do that? Do it yeah. We need these. <laughs> How many pieces have you got all told? Well, there are about 140 photographs in the shoot. Um, probably 100 of them have ended up in the collage. And it's amazing, actually, because it's a building. I live in London. I uh, haven't, haven't been to Buckingham Palace for many, many years. Going down there, you see what a beautiful place it is. Not yeah. only the palace, but the areas around it as well. i tell you what's nice, the fact that you've got all the characters all on that one shot. They're all perfect there. And yes. then everything else is hodgepodge at different yeah. times and different colours and things, yeah. but well, that is stunning. Yeah, well, it's the focal point, yeah. but the rest is slightly more quirky. Yeah. Blaze, one of our other artists in this group, was also working with photographic paper, but not in the traditional way. I'm going to sprinkle some sequins onto the paper, then um, we should end up with some really nice silhouettes of the sequins. I don't know how this is going to turn out. It might be brilliant, it might not work. <laughs> That's the wonder of working in here. You never know how your print's going to turn out and it's exciting. Sometimes a little disappointing, but mostly just exciting. Blaze, tell me about this. How does it all work? Well. It's photograms. Instead of using a negative to make a picture, I used newspaper articles, pictures, anything I could collect on a Diamond Jubilee. And how did you make them into, into negatives then? In some cases, like the big yeah. the photo, average, I yeah. covered them with resin to make them semi-transparent, oh. and then I got a direct print from them. Wow. And this is the sequence that they have to be in to please you, is it? Is that Yes. You want it that way and yes. no other way. No. So you're going to what, take a photo of that so that yes, I'm going to take a photo so it will know. Yeah. Have you taken it? Yeah. I was expecting a huge <laughs> click. <laughs> Helen is taking her inspiration from various London landmarks. So I'd like to do a portrait of the Queen, but I thought to make it a little bit abstract. Throughout her hair, I do a mixture of sort of pen and watercolour images and collage, a whole representation of the noughties. What I really like to do today is to do some sketches and some illustrations of some of the fantastic architecture and aspects of the millennium. Well, I'm going to do them large to start with and then I might manipulate them, bring them down in size so that they will form a smaller part of the Queen's hair. So that's uh, what I'm hoping to achieve today. My last colour. <laughs> Any good? Very good, yeah. <laughs> That's great. What a lovely likeness. You like it? Yeah. Everybody yeah. tells me you're the fastest drawer in the West. So they say. <laughs> and the other members of this group also created some surprising pieces. So, Sarah, tell me. How does this relate to the Queen's 60 years on the throne? Well, if you want to grab that end, Rolf, I'll show you. Oh. And? Just pull it. <laughs> Next one. Oh, I like it. <laughs> I 
It's it's compulsive, isn't it? You can't stop. What a great idea. That's fantastic. Thank you. Good idea. Beautifully executed. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. I haven't even finished my own painting. a reference photo of the golden coach and trying to get it blurry and sort of mixing in with the background a bit so that it looks mysterious and magical and almost like a fairy tale. I remember it well. I think while that's drying off a little bit I'm going to sign this picture. What with a nice red, yeah. Pleased with the progress I've made and the composition generally, but uh, I think I was a little over ambitious with a number of people sitting in the living room watching television. In fact, there were more on the real day, but I'm quite pleased with it. And if I have another go at it at home, I might uh, even finish it properly. This is when I find out if it really worked. Here we go. Oh, yes. Love it's me, isn't it? <laughs> yep, that's you. In the 70s, anyway. Oh, it's lovely, Sarah. It's lovely. Thank you very much. And the corgis. Yeah. Actually, you've got three legs. Oh. I just saw your oh. Jack the Peg last night <laughs> on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> isn't it exciting when you suddenly see it and you see how it's all working? It's I love this. This is the best moment because you've been working on it all day and you really have no idea what it's going to look like. Print it. Let's see how oh, okay. exciting. Well, <laughs> I love the three-legged bit and the dogs. <laughs> what is that bit behind there? Oh, that's the teapot from the display. Oh, I see the so, teapot. Yeah. I see it. I just love the dogs. Wow, that's lovely. Isn't that good? Oh, you've thank got you. The, you've got the attitude, the feeling, and the, the electricity of it all. And it's just perfect. Oh, thank you, Robert. You say that. That's praise that's indeed. Magic. I thought we should come bang up to date, though, because of the um, the Olympic torch going across the country at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Because um, we were talking about the Olympics earlier, weren't we? Yeah. So I've got my tablet here, and I've become really obsessed with doing quick little sketches. So I did this a couple... The, yeah, literally, you can see yesterday over a cup of coffee and it's um, Zara, the Queen's the granddaughter, um, holding the, the flame as she goes around Cheltenham Racecourse. There it is, bang up to date now. I think we can safely say we've done 60 years. been a fantastic day and as everyone finishes their paintings and packs up their materials I know we're going to have a brilliant tribute to Her Majesty the Queen. Crikey, what a day, <laughs> that was amazing. But I'm not quite sure how we're now going to transform this into an exhibition space. But very exciting, just the variety of work, the yeah, artwork. It's been amazing. I must say, I can't wait to see it when you've transformed it into an exhibition. Thanks, Rolf. Neither can I. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wow, <laughs> look at this. Everyone's gone. Everything's been packed away. The place is completely empty. We've now got to transform this into an art gallery. Okay, guys. Yeah. 
hear that, guys? I think that's good. And despite being exhausted, we all worked against the clock to create our very own art gallery. must have been up all night to get this hung like this. It's Fantastic. just brilliant. I'm thrilled. So here you have it. It's our own Diamond Jubilee tribute to Her Majesty the Queen, created by some of her people. And the gallery is now open until Sunday the 10th of June. Entrance is free, so please come along and see the exhibition. It's at the Old Vic Tunnels at Waterloo. Cup of tea afterwards. <laughs> we hope that this has inspired you to pick up a brush or pencil, crayon, whatever, and create your own works of art. What have you got to lose?